Hey, what's happening? Good one. I'm Sir James. Coming out to you guys with another video. Hopefully, you guys are looking forward to the weekend. And you know it's a pretty much a good Friday when you come home from work. You're about to enjoy a three-day weekend, and you are greeted right as you get home from the UPS driver who has a package for you, which that package is another custom lightsaber. So before we hop into this one, um, I just want to kind of let you guys know a little update on the Obi-Wan saber from the pack store. Um, it's sitting in the last location prior to going out for delivery, which I was expecting to be delivered Thursday. Never happened. Today, never happened. So it might go out for delivery tomorrow. I have no idea, but uh, it's a bit of annoying because I'm like literally getting zero updates for my tracking information. And DHL, which is the delivery service that the pack store uses and Ultimate Works, yeah, it's just, um, they're just really annoying right now. But anyways... We have this one, which this one is going to be a bit more exciting anyways, especially with all the perks and stuff like that on here. Now, I had asked you guys any voting option for the Luke Skywalker lightsaber, the thin neck design, which one I should go with. And I know a couple of you said both, which I mean, trying to kill my wallet here. Um, but anyways, it was a vote between two options. One was the creepy uncle hilt, as it's called. I know a weird name for it. Um, but it was equipped with NeoPixel CFX. It's got an OLED screen, not on the outside, but on the inside. So when you open it up, there's the screen. Um, but it was a really solid build, so I thought it was great, which uh, that's already over by now if you're kind of curious about the listing. And then there was another one, a Luke Skywalker Return of the Jedi-based unit, uh, complete with also Crystal Focus 10, but also had a Kyber Crystal Chamber reveal, which I thought was really cool. And pretty much you guys mostly voted, uh, voted, not voted, voted for that option. And it's right here now. Now I know what you guys are thinking. Okay, how the heck did you order it and already receive it in pretty much six days? Well, the person that I ordered it from, which uh, let me get the name here from his uh, page, the Genesis Sabres, he had this on his page. Now he's not someone that has a bunch of hilts available for purchase or anything. Um, he's someone that would get a hilt um, after some time and he'll work on it and put basically a lot of love and passion into the construction of the hilt, which he was a really solid dude, by the way, answered all my questions, provided me some extra videos, feedback, anything that I needed to know about, he was there answering. So he had great customer service and he had this available. And so I just happened to snag it. And now we have it here. Uh, based on where it came from, which is all the way from Singapore, it looks like the packaging survived. I did remove my personal information out of here. Now let's just hope everything is intact. And I wasn't sure if I had to pay custom fees. I mean, I've never paid customs before, but no, nah, I didn't have to pay anything extra, which is nice. I, mean, I live in California, so I don't think that's a thing for us. I think UK, I think custom fees are a thing. Uh, I don't know. I personally don't know how all that works out. All right, so. Nicely wrapped and it actually shipped out pretty quick because I ordered it on uh, this on a Saturday afternoon and he had it packaged ready to go pretty much by Sunday or the next day. So I want to be careful with how we open this. Am I even doing it the right way? No, I think I have this the wrong way. There's a little sleeve here. Okay, now I have this upside down. It's like, it's like a little puzzle here. Okay, I think we're good. We're gonna put this away. Um, so anyways, I also wanna kinda let you guys know, um, based on the sabers I've used, I'm getting my first profi saber, or actually two profi sabers. One of them is the Graphic Supreme. Uh, which has been shipped out and the other one is through uh Corbanth, which is their mpp 2.5 basically darth vader saber also with prof the profi board so uh that's going to be very cool to check out and we're going to see if this so-called profi board is um as exciting as everyone claims it is all right so that was nicely packaged he he even had a little little box for it. So the first one here is that we actually have a NeoPixel blade and he said this was a 28 inch blade, which is great because for me personally, 
I like the 28 inch blades. It's just a good size, especially when you go into places like Disneyland or even Disney World. Uh, it's just a lot easier to manage through the crowds versus a longer blade. I'm gonna try to carefully remove this as best I can. All right, there we go. So there's our blade. It's a solid blade. Nice smooth finish to it. And nice and lightweight. Uh, we're going to set this down over here as we're going to use that. Now typically for a thin neck saber, obviously they're not going to be meant for dueling because of the whole well, thin neck design. There's not a lot for it to grab onto. Many hours later. Okay, so let me make sure there's nothing in here. There's a little bag that fell down here. I think we're okay on that. So he has these uh, really like soft paddings here that were over the edges of this box. So yeah, definitely made sure that this was safe. So we have our first little bag here. All right, so we have a retention screw. I believe he said this has two retention screw, but he uses typically one. And then we have this connector here, uh, which on the one end, it's a magnetic connection. And then a USB on this really nice braided cable. So I really like that. And that's it for that. And now we have the main reason why we are here. Oh boy, this thing looks great. So, even the inside's nicely uh, padded. All right, so now that we got the unboxing out of the way, let's go ahead and get a closer look at the Sabre. And yes, there was a slight outfit change. That's because I'm kind of redoing this second half of the video since the original one at one point, the uh, battery off my uh, audio pretty much died. So uh, here I am again. Now I did get the chance to mess with this, of course, off camera during the time that has passed. And there is actually a thing that I did change on here that I will share with you guys in terms of what the difference was between how it was and how it is now. But anyways, going over the Sabre itself, this actually does have quite a bit of heftiness as far as the weight goes. Unlike the version from Star Wars Galaxy's Edge that Disney sells where it was extremely lightweight, still looks nice, don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking how it looks. It's just, you know, it's very lightweight. This definitely has a lot of heft in it. And it's to the point where you could easily use this as a blunt weapon. Not saying that you should, but worst case scenario, you could easily defend yourself with this, that's for sure. It is actually really well built and I like how everything is, but let me go ahead and give you a closer look. So the first section that we have here is that we have a blade plug that was included. This does have a NeoPixel setup with Crystal Focus 10 as the heart of it. And as you can see, we got that nice thin neck design on the saber. Our control box, uh, these little black portions here are actually your power on and your aux button. And of course you have your D-ring. Now there's a few sections where this actually does open up. For example, this little bottom part here, you twist and you pull it down this opens up revealing the inside. So the way that he has it wired is that there's actually a kill switch right here to turn it on or turn it off when need to. So it's a very easy to access thing and I like the ease of use for it. Uh, this grenade handle section here actually does open up revealing uh, more of the chassis, which is a goth chassis, which we'll go over the specs a little bit later on. Uh, now, usually for a crystal chamber setup, there's a couple ways that you can go about this one. Option one is you can do a crystal chamber setup inside here, which I know a lot of people do. So that way, when you open this, you know, bada bing, bada boom, there's your crystal. Uh, but for here, this one's actually done differently. And I really like how this is set up. Because if we go back here, we could actually 
open this up and as you can see we have our crystal chamber reveal it's a full um, everything inside is actually made of metal and it's very well done nicely detailed I just liked how everything turned out and now for this grenade section too you could actually tighten this up so you don't have to open that if you don't want to I mean for me I don't really have a reason to but it's just because I like the fact that you know I could open this up and I could open this and then the doors open up making it like a a more of a really custom saber compared to all the stuff that I showcased before. So let's go ahead and actually activate this now. So we're going to go turn this down, flip the switch. Now because I was messing with this off camera because I had to redo this video, I did redo the lighting here with the help from a friend online. Uh, Brian was his name. And he shared some configuration files that I because I wanted to change because originally out of the box it had it to where it was just on a red when it's on like on a standby and then when it's on this green light will be the only thing on to the point where when you deactivate then both lights will blink but I wanted both lights to activate so as you can see we got the green and then the red the greens are really bright LED that's for sure but as you can see it does go back and forth so I got that configured to how I want it which is great then of course activate we do have these that actually blink smooth swing with the crystal focus 10 so again awesome control box setup so I'm glad that that was configured to my liking and now let's go ahead and since this is turned on we can go ahead and reveal the crystal chamber so as you can see when it's on standby mode this has a pulsing light I think there are ways to configure it I'm still kind of learning the configurations for the crystal chamber or I could have it pulsating like that or I could even do a slower pulse which is probably something I'm going to go for but when the saber is fully activated it's not pulsing anymore. Uh, when you activate certain effects, so that's really cool. So let's go ahead and bring on over a blade here, which was included the 28 inch blade. It's actually really hot. So if you notice, I'm sweating. It's really hot in this room. So if you've never figured that out by now, so what you do is that you actually have to unscrew this top piece here, which reveals a hidden retention screw, which I actually really like that. I like the fact that it's hidden so it doesn't you know, mess with its overall appearance and design. Let me bring that over here. I'm gonna use this table here for a moment. Oops. I messed that up. I'm supposed to have the emitter on, put the blade in, and then just simply slide everything in. And then tighten up the blade just enough to where I can go ahead and now screw in this piece. Now I didn't add a bunch of fonts on here. He actually did provide uh, the basic fonts that would normally come with C, uh, CFX. He did delete the ones that didn't have smooth swing, so I didn't have to really do that, so that saves me time. But he did add a font on here by Kyberphonic, which is the Luke Return of the Jedi one, which is a font that I already have and purchased previously, so I technically already own the said font. I know some people tend to have issues when people send sabers fully loaded with fonts and, you know, creators don't get supported by it, which is completely understandable, but, you know, I do own many of the fonts out there, so for the most part, there's probably not one that I don't have ish. So anyways, let's go ahead and um, ignite. Let's just go ahead and turn off this light here. And let's move this out of the way. So again, because it's running a crystal focus 10, it does have the smooth swing support. You know, flash on clash and everything. 
And then uh, it should have belay tip as well. Oops. All right, well, I'm not activating that correctly. I don't want to bash it too much because it's a thin neck saber and there's not a lot where the blade grips onto. If you guys can see that, it's that's all that's there that's kind of gripping onto it. So I don't want to bash it too much, but it does have all the effects where it's going to be. And this is more of a showpiece saber, you know, just kind of like, hey, check out this cool thing. And just to be able to show it off, which is, uh, again, I really like that. Uh, let's go ahead and, um, oh yeah, show the lights again. So yeah, there you go. And then deactivate. Let's go ahead and change a font so I can show you how it was by default. Which, by the way, there's also that music font on here too. I don't want to play it too long, this copyright. All right. So here's a Darth Vader one. So here is how it was by default originally out of the packaging, where on standby mode, you have a red light that is only enabled. And then when you activate, green, and then when you deactivate, it does the blink and then it goes back to red. So that is what I changed. And then because we have a Darth Vader crystal in here, or Darth Vader font, now we have a red crystal, which again, I, I need to change the setting to more of a slow pulse. Uh, I did add one font currently, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch to that one right now. Sound bank selection. It's, uh, it's a second Vader font, but uh, this second one actually has it where Vader's breathing while the, Vader, while the saber is activated. And yes, I know technically it's on green right now. Let's see. So we got our blade profiles. Let's see. Change it to a lighter tone there. Let's go ahead and go to a different font. Sound bank selection. Audio player, SD card, USB access. So you got all your system menus and whatnot. And uh, you know, getting access to the uh, SD menu, I actually really liked how it is because you provided this really nice uh, braided cable here. And in order for me to get access to the SD card, I technically have to remove this bottom piece. Uh, loosen the screw and just to move the chassis up ever so slightly to where I could remove the speaker Not pulling it out all the way just enough to where it's out of the way And then basically this thing has a little magnetic attachment And then basically I just go to the USB mode and then there I go And also that's the way to charge it too Seems a little bit of a pain but you know that's the process Because I won't be able to change the battery at all What how this one is done System menu, exit menu So there's Hoth, uh, Saber, Shatter Points Shoto. This is General Kenobi. And then uh, we'll do uh, Obi-Wan. Surely we can be civilized about this. I figure we'll do Obi-Wan because I'm waiting for the uh, Obi-Wan episode 4 hilt to come in. Our guests have arrived. So the um, the new Pixel Blade is actually really nice and bright. So this is definitely done well. There's no issues with the blade. There's no dead pixels, dead spots, or anything like that. So everything was shipped perfectly fine. And because we have Obi-Wan activated, I do love the look of the blue kyber crystal. Just a really nice looking color. I mean, you could say blue is my favorite color, but really nice. But yeah. So, it is never time to limber up. That is very true. So we're gonna go ahead and bring this over to deactivate. But yeah, overall, I'm actually very happy with the Saber and the person that actually did the install and had it for sale, you know, he was cool, answered all my questions. Now, keep in mind this individual, which uh, let me bring up the name here. Um, it's not like 
you know, he's offering a service or anything like that where you could send in stuff and it's not like he's offering a bunch of different hilts that you can buy right now. Um, he's very passionate for what he does and basically he kind of does things one at a time. So like this one, you know, he's had this for who knows how long put his heart and soul into the construction, which everything about it was great, answered all my questions. And um, I'm really happy with the results of this one. So uh, rarely by chance you'll see uh, some additional hilts be available on his page. Uh, let me just find my email I sent myself, which pretty much goes over the specs for you guys. And that is going to be, oh, my note to self. So here is the details of this saber. Uh, this one here, the hilt is a Corbanth LS6 with Gullwing Crystal Reveal and the Hero Configuration. We have a Goth 3D Master Chassis with Metal Crystal Chamber, a 28 inch thin wall NeoPixel Blade. We also have the SHTOC Custom Works NPXL, which I believe that's that NeoPixel setup where you also have those LED lights, but feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on that info. Uh, we also have the integrated LED connectors with magnetic connect, a blade plug, crystal focus tank, which is the heart of it. We also have the key power, so it goes over the battery, a 20 millimeter speaker, uh, five included Sabre fonts with the default CFX, but also with the added Kyberphonics Return of the Jedi uh, Luke Skywalker. And then it's also got Bluetooth capability, but, but because I'm on Android, I can't use the Bluetooth currently. But if I was like on, let's say, iOS, there's an app that apparently you could download and you could do a bunch of things with it, which um, I have no idea exactly what because I've never used it. But, you know, whether or not I would actually use that, I'm not entirely sure because, I mean, I do technically have a Sabre from Electrum Sabercraft. Hopefully coming soon, that's going to utilize the mobile app anyways. But let me know what you guys think about this custom Luke Skywalker lightsaber. Like I said, I think this is a great addition to my collection. And, you know, a lot of the times the hilts that I showcase are pretty simple. You know, just, okay, here's a different looking hilt. Um, but to have something with something extra, you know, like, again, something where you could reveal a crystal chamber and the fact that you can take it apart in certain areas and kind of give that more custom feeling to it um, is really cool. Um, but again, let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. I'm extremely happy. So for the person that um, made this, which let me bring up the name really quick. So this is what happens when you're not prepared. His name is Genesis Saber. So if you're watching, which I'm pretty sure you are, uh, thank you for this. Uh, you did a fantastic job with the packaging and the installation. And I can't wait to start loading this up with the fonts that I have in my collection. But until then, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. And I'll see you guys on the next video upload. And don't mind me. I'm going to go jump in the pool while it's nice and cool out. Later.